Hello friends, welcome to the third episode in my series on serotonin. In this brief episode, we'll be talking about one of the most strongly established relationships between serotonergic activity and behavior in people, which is specifically how serotonergic activity appears to be inversely associated with both impulsiveness and aggression, which means when people appear to have higher serotonergic activity, they appear less impulsive and less aggressive, and this is very robustly established. So I'll go through some of my notes here that I've written down so I don't forget anything that I wanted to mention. First of all, we know that in, uh, when tryptophan is increased uh, in the diet of irritable people, their agreeableness is increased. What we've, I, I should mention something also regarding aggression, now before we get into aggression. In invertebrates, so, for example, lobsters, serotonin levels are, have an opposite association with aggression. So this is why, for example, it's very well known that um, uh, Jordan Peterson, who is one of my favorite uh, speakers, uh, has a story in his book, The 12 Rules for Life, about uh, lobsters, saying that lobsters with lower serotonin levels are more submissive and less aggressive and so on. This is not the same in lobsters as humans. So in lobsters, when serotonin levels increase, aggression increases. In humans, when serotonin levels increase, uh, agreeableness increases, and people are less aggressive or less potentially aggressive. This was first noticed in 1979 with studies on, uh, actually, I think they were inmates, uh, testing their 5-HIAA, uh, the major downstream metabolite of serotonin, in their serum. And what they found was that people who had lower 5-H, uh, 5-IAA in their serum, which means they had probably less serotonergic activity, also tended to be uh, less aggressive. So this was first established then, and then there's been many studies that have established this uh, repetitively. And that's why the manipulation of the serotonergic system is one of the main tools used to deal with people who have uh, explosive uh, tempers or what they call intermittent explosive disorder. Anyhow, uh, what I wanted to mention is that, oh, also by the way, tryptophan depletion studies, which is the, uh, the upstream to, to serotonin, serotonin is made from tryptophan, so tryptophan depletion studies are when they remove tryptophan from a diet. They've also shown that women also become aggressive when serotonin is decreased because of decreasing tryptophan. Now, in terms of the... So, there, so after 1979, there, there came this hypothesis called the serotonin hypothesis of aggression. Since then, three versions of the serotonin hypothesis of aggression have been uh, proposed. The first one is called the low serotonin syndrome model which essentially uh, indicates that when people have low serotoninergic activity, they become more impulsive. This model doesn't go so far as to describe aggression. Uh, the second one is called the information processing model of serotonin, which was uh, proposed by Michel Spunt. And essentially what this uh, theory describes is that serotonergic activity modulates the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA and the at least, let's say, pro-impulsivity and pro-aggression neurotransmitter norepinephrine, which is also called noradrenaline across the pond. So this theory essentially postulates that via modulating those other neurotransmitters, serotonin modulates aggression and impulsivity, or impulsiveness, sorry. And then the third theory is called the irritable aggression model, which essentially indicates that uh, low, having a low serotonergic activity makes someone more irritable in general. They have like a disposition that's irritable that when they encounter a stressful stimulus could lead them to become aggressive. Whereas the former theory of Spunt indicates that serotonin is modulating its effect via GABA and norepinephrine, which are both fight or flight uh, modulating uh, hormone neurotransmitters. So that's basically a little bit about the history of the aggression issue. Um, an interesting thing also I'd like to mention here is that uh, it's been quite established that in rodents, if serotonergic neurons are fired, rodents are more patient. They're more willing to wait for a reward. Whereas, and the more, and it's dose dependent, the more the neurons fire, the more willing the rodent is to wait. When the neurons are less fired, the rodent becomes impatient and unwilling to wait. So this is something very important to think about because somebody who, and this happens to many young people, 
somebody who has a temper problem, I've had in my life this, this problem also, which was very difficult for me, and uh, people who have a problem with their temper, or people who have uh, imp make impulsive decisions at a young age, which happens to many people, may benefit from a slight increase in their serotonergic uh, activity in terms of it being able to make them wait. Which is, by the way, if you think about it, an integral element in the concept of resilience. And resilience is a, you could call it a personality trait, although it's not traditionally called one, but it's a personality trait that is strongly associated with success in careers in life. Resilience is so important because in life, I'm done with my informative talk here, I just want to mention something. In life, you know, we all think that sometimes people who succeed in their career are lucky, but the reality is that life gives us so many opportunities, but the issue is we don't see them, okay? Or we see one and we discount the others. But life is, as long as we live a long time, life gives us many opportunities. So sometimes what matters the most is not how uh, good you are at what you're doing, but how stubborn you are or resilient you are in facing obstacles or failures and getting right back up again. So serotonin really affects that because it affects patience, it affects impulsiveness, it affects aggression, which has to do with anger toward external threats. So see how it can be performance enhancing and more than just a memory and learning aspect. Anyway, I hope this was beneficial. I'll talk to you guys in the next episode about something I haven't decided yet. See you soon.